we are a full stack logistics player. Uh, started out in 2011. Uh, now we are among the largest in India when it comes to logistics. We started out as a primarily e-commerce logistics company. However, over the past years, we've diversified into other verticals of logistics, for example, B2B, uh, warehousing, freight, cross-border, ocean, etc. Uh, just to set the scene, oh, this is bright. Uh, just to set the scene, uh, I'll give you an oversimplified version of what our network looks like. And uh, so that will uh, give you some context on the rest of my um, talk. So simply speaking, once we get a request to transport a shipment from point A in the country to point B, uh, our trucks go to the seller's warehouse. For example, this could be an e-commerce uh, company's warehouse. Uh, we go to the seller's warehouse, pick up the shipments, take it to our processing center. In the processing center, we sort the shipments based on the destination. Uh, so he, it's here that we decide uh, the last mile destination center that it must be transported to, and we decide the journey that the shipment will be taking across the country. Uh, once, it's a <coughs> once we know where to send it to, it's transported to some uh, a transportation hub. For example, the shipment needs to travel from uh, let's say some village in Karnataka to Gurgaon, it'll go to our transportation hub in Bangalore. Uh, from there, it'll either sit on an aeroplane or on a truck and move to the destination hub in Delhi. From the destination hub in Delhi, it'll move to uh, the destined destination center. And from the destination center, bikers will take away the shipment and deliver to the customer's doorstep. So delivery does this around a million times a day. And our entire operations is electronically managed, which means that every time we do this, we collect a lot of data about how a shipment is transported through each of our facilities. Uh, we collect a lot of data on uh, how our vehicles are moving across, how our uh, field executives are moving on the streets and so on. <clears throat> Which leads me to this neat flywheel. Now. On the left of the flywheel is our logistics operations, and on the right of the flywheel is our uh, tech stack. As we do more deliveries, we do collect more data. As we collect more data, we are able to build better intelligence of our ecosystem, uh, which helps us optimize our network. As we optimize our network, our cost reduces, which helps us get more business. More business means more data, and the flywheel kicks in. And this is how as uh, we, we were able to disrupt a fairly conventional industry like logistics. It's, it's an industry hundreds of years old, right? But however, over the past eight years, being tech-enabled, we were able to disrupt it and gain the volumes that we have to today. Now, <clears throat> a large part of what we do in data sciences and AI at delivery is around optimization, right? Because at the end of the day, it's a network. You apply all sorts of optimization techniques. I myself come from an optimization background. I did my PhD in optimization. I was a professor for a few years in this space. Uh, when I moved to delivery, I was excited to s solve all of these problems related to network design, uh, facility location problem, ve uh, vehicle routing problem, etc. <coughs> However, these don't work in real life because the data around us or, or our intelligence of the ecosystem is very poor. Any optimization model that you try and, and employ, it really depends on you know, the, the cost functions that you define or the constraints that you define. However, if these values are not given to you properly, it's going to be garbage in, garbage out. And whatever you optimize for is not going to be valid on the ground. So a very, very important problem for us is to build intelligence of our ecosystem. Now, what is our ecosystem, right? Our ecosystem as a logistics company comprises of uh, addresses, which is location data. It comprises of the customer. Uh, it comprises of the shipments that we're transporting. It comprises of the fleet that we're running. It comprises of our own facilities. So that's essentially the ecosystem in which we operate in. Now we need to have very, very solid intelligence about each of these components to be able to do anything related to optimization. I'll give you quick examples of each of these just to provide some uh, intuition. Now location intelligence is actually the most important piece. If you don't know where your shipment needs to be picked up from and needs to be delivered to, there's not much you can do when it comes to system direction or optimization. Right? Uh, customer intelligence is equally important. Uh, we, so far, we have done about half a billion deliveries. Uh, we have interacted with 140 million unique customers. Each customer 
Each customer has their own unique preferences. Some customers don't want to accept a delivery on a Sunday. Some customers won't be available during early morning times and so on. And uh, to reduce the cost of last mile deliveries, we need to have good understanding of the customer preferences. Uh, shipments itself, to have an understanding of the shipments is very important. Uh, can a shipment uh, fly on an aeroplane or not? That's a very important decision we need to make. Right? For example, a pair of <coughs> gas jeans can definitely fly on an airplane, but a gas lighter can't. Uh, how do you determine uh, what shipment can fly, what can't? How do you determine uh, whether a shipment is dangerous or not? The fleet, uh, understanding of our fleet, how they're moving across uh, the country. We operate in 17,000 pin code across the country. We have around 10,000 trucks running all across the country. We need to have very good intelligence, real-time intelligence on where they are, how much time they're taking to go from point A to point B, Traditional map services which are available commercially do not provide you good intelligence about truck movements, right? <clears throat> they give you very good ETAs for bikes, uh, walking, cars, but none of them give you ETAs for trucks. So we need to build that as well. Uh, then we have our own facilities. We operate close to 3,000 facilities pan India. We need to understand their capacities, their manpower, attendance, etc., uh, so that we are able to allocate resources or shipments to those facilities accordingly. Other than this, there are a bunch of unknown unknowns that I don't know about. But as we develop our, as the flywheel kind of closes in, as we collect more data, we will develop more intelligence. I'll, I'll <coughs> lead this into a few use cases, right? And I'll, and please, uh, let, let's, let this be an open discussion. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have even now. Uh, I'll be going through three, four use cases and trying to explain uh, how we actually use AI uh, in this entire journey. The most interesting use case for us is actually optimizing the last mile. Now the last mile is this piece. <clears throat> From the delivery center to the shopper's house. Okay, this is around five to 10 kilometers. We call it last mile because it's easier to say that. So <clears throat> uh, the last mile itself, even though it's around 10 kilometers or five to 10 kilometers, it co accounts for about 25 to 30% of the overall cost. Imagine you're transporting a shipment from Bangalore to Delhi, which is 15 to 1,500, 2,000 kilometers. However, the last mile, the last 10 kilometers take up 25% of the cost, which is insane, right? It's a disproportionate amount of cost is being spent on the last mile. And the reason is that last mile in India is very chaotic. Why it's chaotic is because uh, our addresses are unstructured. Uh, pin codes don't make much sense. The average size of a pin code in India is around 80 square kilometers. Uh, apologies, not the average. The median size of a pin code is 80 square kilometers. The average is much higher. Uh, 15 to 20 percent of all people write the wrong pin codes. Those of you who are from Gurgaon or Noida, or at least understand that uh, that area well, uh, will know that everyone in Noida and Gurgaon write the same pin code, right? <coughs> and these two cities are among the top 10 uh, cities in India when it comes to volume of e-commerce shipments. Uh, what I'm trying to say is pin code based routing, which is the traditional way of routing shipments in the country, does not work. As opposed to countries in the West where a pin code is able to resolve any address within 200 meters, right? In the UK, give, you, give yourself a pin code, it'll get you to 200 meters of the address, not in India. So the problem is that <coughs> constraining ourselves to the pin code for routing is very dangerous, which means that this is the black boundary here is uh, a pin code in Gurgaon. It's massive. And around that, we have around five delivery centers. The red balloons that you see are delivery centers. Now, if in a traditional logistics industry, you cannot have more than one distribution center per pin code, right? Because if you, let's say, if you have five in this case, and you only rely on pin code based routing, and you have a shipment with some pin code, you will not know which one to send it to. Right? Because all of them belong to the same pin code. That is a very, very important critical piece to understand. Right? Because if you rely on the pin code and the pin code is wrong, you are essentially uh, misrouting your shipment. Uh, and worse, you are constrained, heavily constrained when it comes to optimization on a very large geographical area to have only one distribution center there. Uh, 
at some point delivery used to do pin code based routing and at that point our productivity per rider was around 25. Hence we realized that it's very important to break away from this constraint. Right? And we decided to actually let go of the pin code system altogether and see what's inside an address. However, breaking down, oh, sorry for the bad formatting there, it looked fine on my computer. So breaking down an address is extremely hard. People write all sorts of addresses in an un unstructured way. I mean, here are some funniest of my examples. Uh, one of my favorite ones is people write Andheri Wast, which is exactly one edit distance away from east and one edit from west. And, <laughs> and combine it with the wrong pin code and you are absolutely clueless of where it needs to go to. Uh, the second one is uh, also interesting. People, don't get me wrong, I mean, this person is trying to be helpful. Right. He is giving detailed uh, <coughs> description on how to get to his address. Uh, take a left, andar wali gali mein jao, do this, do that. Agar ghar pe nahi mila, to kisi aur ko de do. <laughs> so, fantastic customer, right? But <coughs> however, it doesn't help because our, our machines, we, we're dealing with a million shipments a day. We don't have people to read this level of detail. Uh, and if you're trying to automate things, bring in efficiency, a machine should be able to disambiguate that. The third one is not a very nice customer, uh, unlike the second one. This one is a bit dangerous, it seems. So <coughs> although the customer has all good intentions, right? They give the house number, village number, PO box, police station, everything, district, but with a very nasty threat as well. Uh, so this is definitely an angry customer of, of the e-commerce industry who's he will take strict ag action because last time something went wrong and he has a CID officer and his right arm was broken or something like that. Anyways, uh, <coughs> the problem with this is that it has every possible detail about the address but more than we need. Now, we need to build systems to actually make sense of this. The first version of our attempt in trying to do this was called AdFix. Uh, that was the first version back in 2014. Uh, this was the first instance where we tried to use AI. However, this is AI without the ML part of it. Uh, if, you, if you were in Dennis's talk yesterday, uh, he gave some insight into AI doesn't need to be machine learning. AI is any system which could even be rule-based. So this was our first rule-based uh, attempt at actually solving this problem. So what we did was simple. Uh, given any address string, we applied some basic cleaning rules on top of the address. Uh, we curated a list of localities span India. We had a manual team uh, sit down and curate a list of all localities, or at least the major localities span India. Back then, we just had a list of around one lakh localities. And we were doing something simple. Given an address string, clean it up, do a fuzzy match with the list that you have, and output a locality. Once you have a locality, <coughs> we manually map it to, we manually have another uh, config where uh, the locality is mapped to a certain distribution center. And once we know the locality, we assign that distribution center. So this was a very simple attempt at actually getting rid of the pin code. Now, normally what you do is, pin codes are matched to distribution centers. Now we were able to break away from the pin code and map localities to DCs. Very simple, uh, enabled us to break away from pin codes, uh, enabled us to actually generate <coughs> more productivity, more than the 25 uh, that we were doing at a pin code level. However, it came with problems. <coughs> Right? Because address cleaning rules that we applied, those rules may be very different in different parts of the country. Obviously, in India is a country of diverse languages, diverse states, uh, diverse people. Everyone writes a language differently. They write addresses differently. So the rules ought to be different. Sitting in Gurgaon, we were able to come up with some rules, but they were not comprehensive. Right? Second, the locality database that we built was nowhere close to being comprehensive. Right? People write the same locality differently, connot places written as CP, greater Kailash is written as GK. So you need it, and th these are examples from Delhi. I mean, I'm sure there's similar examples from all across the country. Uh, it's very hard for us to come up with all sorts of uh, for variants of how people write localities. The third is even the locality to DC mapping that we manually did could be wrong, right? It could be wrong because maybe we got the wrong locality from the address. Maybe the locality that we found was so large that it doesn't really map to any single DC. So there were problems, which is where we then needed to 
take it a notch further. So the third version of ad fix, uh, the second version was a failure, so I won't sp sp speak about that. Uh, the third version of ad fix uh, was smart. So we leveraged uh, a lot of data that we had collected by then. Uh, so far we've done 500 million deliveries, which basically means we have 500 million address strings. And corresponding to those address strings, we have 500 million geocodes. <coughs> right? We collect a, a geocode as, as and when we do a delivery to a customer. Uh, the delivery boy, they take their app, punch in, and we collect the geocode automatically. <clears throat> so we have a lot of address data and a lot of location data. So the question was, how do we leverage this to essentially build a better version of AdFix? So, <coughs> so this is what uh, the new version of AdFix looks like. It's a, it's a nice UI. Uh, <coughs> the skin of the UI is not built by us. The skin is provided by MapMyIndia. However, the search engine is ours. Essentially, what we needed to do was build a search engine, which takes as an input any address string and outputs characteristics of that address. Characteristics include whether the address is valid or not, whether it's residential, commercial, what kind of an address it is, uh, the exact lat long of uh, the rooftop, uh, the pin code. And now, now look at this address. This is actually my address. Um, I have misspelled it. Uh, it's A161 Raheja Atlantis Sector 31 Gurgaon. I have kind of misspelled it purposefully. What AdFix is able to do is it's able to actually figure out the correct spelling of Raheja Atlantis, figure out the missing piece of information in the address. That Raheja Atlantis is a building in Sector 31, which lies in Gurgaon, which lies in Haryana, which lies in India. This address lies in the 122001 pin code. So in fact, it's actually able to fix the address, right? and provide a very good, very precise lat long of where my house is. Uh, the red polygon that you see is a polygon for sector 31. Similarly, we have a polygon for Raheja Atlantis. We would have a polygon for Gurgaon, uh, Haryana, and so on. Just to make my point, this is extremely accurate. <coughs> now, I live in Tower A. This is actually the entrance of Tower A right here. That's Tower B, C, D, etc we were able to predict with a very, very high level of accuracy of where this tower is. Uh, the blue circle represents the error radius that we predict alongside the, uh, the lat log. <coughs> so that's what AdFix is capable of. Now I'll give you some insight onto how we built it. Any questions so far? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is an India problem. Uh, we may open source it at some point, but before that, we may give it off as a paid service. <laughs> uh, but we're still a few, uh, a few months away from that. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly what I'm going to. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm telling you now. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just jump in now. So. So. Sorry? No. <laughs> it, uh, I'll tell you which one it worked for. It, it didn't work for this. It worked okay for this one. So, uh, but at some point, I hope we are able to fix this one as well. Perhaps the latest version will, will work on this. This is an example for six months back. Back then, the update that we had didn't work. I'm told that uh, the version we have now is fantastic. So, <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll give you some insight into how we built it. Okay, so the first thing we do is we look at those 500 million addresses that we have, right? <clears throat> we tokenize them basis n-grams. And we see how people are writing those addresses, the relationships that we see between those n-grams, right? And we are able to create some sort of a graph. Now, <clears throat> this graph essentially is created, there are three components to this graph, really. Uh, <clears throat> it's the node, whether a node is a valid locality or not. Second is are the edges, whether an edge, what an edge represents is that this should be a child of this, is it a valid child or not? And the third is aliases, right? Whether, for example, sector 31 and sec 31 could be two separate nodes. Sec 31 
S31, sector 31, are they the same node or not? So essentially we built three models for each of these probabilities. These probabilities give us the probability of a node being valid, the probability of an edge being strong, and the third is the probability that these two nodes are indeed the same. Uh, <coughs> now how do we do this is for each of these three we have uh, th different ML systems. Uh, the features that go into creating this are frequency of how people write these two words together. For example, we see sector 44 and Gurgaon are written together multiple times. Raheja Atlantis and sector 31 are written together multiple times. So we know that they're connected to each other. Other features that we have are from the, uh, the lat longs that we capture from the ground. We do see that, okay, uh, the lat longs from Raheja 31, uh, Raheja Atlantis lie within the lat longs are subsumed within the lat longs of sector 31. So we are able to assign some score there as well. So basis that we are able to predict uh, these three features, right? And are able to create a graph for the entire country. Now this is a knowledge graph that has, which is kind of created in a <coughs> unsupervised way. Uh, it has a lot of noise as well. And base, and we provide probabilities for each of these nodes and beyond a certain threshold, we accept it or reject it. Right? Now once we have this graph in place, we also have a manual team where we are unsure of the probability. We, we have a manual team which is able to kind of uh, validate whether the graph is making sense or not. So now this graph is extremely important, right? Because this essentially gives you a very good idea of what people are writing in the country, what localities exist in the country, and how they're related to each other uh, in a totally automatic way. The second part is the prediction, right? Now what we have is given a address string, we search through the graph, it's able to come up with various paths, and we have a, again an ML model which evaluates the paths based on certain features, and the one which has the highest score, that's output. For example, in this case, <coughs> the address was this, so what it would normally do is, it sees Gurgaon, so it'll search through all the nodes under Gurgaon, uh, it'll search for fuzzy matches alongside Raheja Atlantis, possibly evaluate three, four different parts which have the words Raheja, which have the words Atlantis, assign it a given score, and output the one which has the highest uh, probability. So that's what AdFix essentially does. Now, how we use AdFix is, any, any questions on this? Yeah, yeah, we do end rounds. We go go up to three. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. We in fact don't use neural networks for the graph. We use deep learning for this particular model. No, for this one, for the hierarchical relationships. So for this uh, model, we use a deep learning. Uh, model to actually predict whether an edge, the score of an edge. So the entire framework, it's a generative framework, right? It's a, it's a graph. Uh, however, there are certain parameters that need to be kind of computed. Those parameters are calculated using uh, machine learning models. One of them is computed using deep learning, but we don't use uh, uh, deep neural networks, the graphs. Yes, that is a problem. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, so for cold starting, what we do is when we need to make a city live, uh, a city where we've never delivered to before, we let it happen via pin codes. We do the routing via pin code. In a month, uh, we get enough volume so that we are able to build this. Right. The first month is by pin codes. Oh uh, yes, okay, we do get a lot of feedback from the delivery guys actually. Uh, we ask them a bunch of questions. Uh, the most important thing they provide us is the lat long of the address. And using that lat long, we are able to actually build all of that. The other things that we kind of see which are missing in our graph, right? For example, I may not be sure 
that Huda market is a valid node or not. If I'm not sure, then we can ask the delivery boy, look, I have seen that Huda market is given, written multiple times. Can you verify that it's valid or not? These are some of the things we do. Uh, but we can't possibly ask them for everything. I, as I said, we do a million deliveries a day. If they start doing all of this, who's going to do the deliveries, right? So that's <coughs> lat long is excellent. That's that's how this entire thing is built. This is the lat long web capture. No, no. In fact, we would not need to build the solution if Google Maps was doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, so we, we do. Uh, no, 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 it's, it's all done electronically, right? So we, we get, for example, as an e-commerce customer, you'll, you'll go to some e-commerce website, put in your address, uh, and that e-commerce website will pass on the delivery order to us. No one in this entire <coughs> pipeline manually checks whether the address is written properly or not. However, we are building solutions which are able to, if you remember this, we had this valid invalid check here, right? What we're trying to do is, we're trying to push this service back to our e-commerce clients. That at the time you write an address on an e-commerce website, they will call our service and will be able to say whether the address is valid or invalid. So we, yes, yes, we've started to do that with some of our clients, but we encourage more of them to do it now. Uh, sorry, let me just move on and we'll take the questions. That would be lovely if we could do that. However, we don't directly interact with the customers, right? Uh, so in e-commerce, a very important thing is stickiness and actually not letting, not pissing off the customers. So if you if you poke the customer a bit too much, that this is wrong, this is wrong, and they might just like, okay. Yeah, yeah, so they might, uh, okay, okay, fuck off. I'm gonna go somewhere else. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll quickly move on to some other use case and then we can come back to these questions. Now, a very important use case for AdFix is actually being able to route our shipments properly. Now, I have a very good understanding of where my customers are. Basis that, I am able to optimize the locations for my last mile distribution centers. Right? Uh, I know exactly where the demand is uh, disputed. So we have a tool called NetPlan. What it does is it solves something known as a location routing problem, which is uh, one of the popular uh, optimization problems in operation research uh, literature. What it does is it is able to, uh, by the way, these blue dots are, uh, not uh, these colored dots are uh, customer locations um, where we know there's demand. Uh, the green balloons is a solution of the location routing problem, uh, which means that these are the four places where we should open distribution centers so that if you open distribution centers here, uh, the last mile cost will be minimized, right? <coughs> so NetPlan does this. It provides you two important things. One is the locations of these DCs, the proposed locations. The second is which DC should service which locality. For example, this DC services all the ones in the red. This one services all the ones in the light blue. This one services all these localities. Now, as soon as I know this and I get an address, I'm able to map the address to one of these dots or somewhere close by. And I know that, okay, this address belongs here, so it should be mapped to this DC. And that's how the first level of routing happens. So as soon as I get a shipment, I'm able to determine the destination center that it should go here, right? The second thing is that I create an automatic dispatch. When it goes to the last mile distribution center, the, the next job here is to be able to assign the shipment to the right delivery boy, right? Because they have their fixed routes and so on. Uh, <clears throat> now, we again perform some optimization here. And uh, what we are able to do is automatically create a dispatch for every field executive. Basis, three, four criteria. What we try and do is we try and minimize the distance that the driver will take. Uh, we try and maximize the utilization of the field executive. We ensure that the load is balanced across executives. And most importantly, we try and keep the preferences of the field executives in mind while making these decisions. Two years back, in fact, when I joined, the first problem I did solve was actually this problem, right? 
And a classical vehicle routing problem does the first three brilliantly. However, it doesn't work on the ground. Because people on the ground say, look, do you really know, you think you know th about this area more than I do? I'm like, uh, yes, I think so, because an optimization problem told me so. And they're like, uh, no, you don't. Uh, <coughs> I've lived here, I, I, I do this like all day, and there's so many nuances about this that you don't understand. That's where actually ML really helped us. So what we, <coughs> it, in addition to the vehicle routing optimization, we started to look at historic data of what our delivery boys are actually doing. Which are the paths they're traveling to? Uh, which are the localities they don't do together? Which are the localities they do together? Basis that we were able to build affinity models and <coughs> minimize deviation from historic FA routes. Once we did this, and this is in pilot stage right now. Uh, in fact, Rishit in my team right now, is, is, he's here, he's running pilots. He's doing one in Bangalore today, I guess. Uh, <coughs> what we notice is, uh, actually even without this, uh, only basis this optimization, we were able to see a remarkable improve in efficiency. If you remember basis pin code based routing, we were able to do 25 to 30 shipments uh, per rider. Once we moved to locality based routing, we were able to do 45 to 50 shipments per rider. Now basis this optimization, we expect another five to six shipments per rider because now the riders will have more time to do deliveries, their routes will be more optimized. So we expect a remarkable increase in productivity further, which will reduce the last mile cost even further. I'll quickly move on to a, a last use case here uh, related to shipment. Uh, <clears throat> we need to build a lot of intelligence about shipments as well. Right? Uh, I've already spoken about whether it's, it's fit to fly or not, right? whether it's a, a cream trousers or a bottle of cream. We need to distinguish that. So we use deep learning models uh, to actually figure that out. Uh, we need to know the tax duty liability of shipments. So basis the product description which is given on, on the item, we try and attempt to figure out the HSN code of the item. Now the HSN code helps us to uh, predict the right uh, tax liability for overseas shipments. Uh, a very important use case is dimension prediction. Uh, we are, we, we transport all sorts of shipments, right? Odd shaped, really small, really large. Not all of them are able to go through our automatic sorting machines, which actually capture the weights and dimension automatically. Uh, some of them are captured using human measures, right? Uh, and which is error prone. So we use ML techniques to actually predict weights and volumes of shipments as well, uh, which enables us to ensure that our vehicles are utilized better, our billings, billing is correct, and so on. Uh, a, a work in progress, uh, use case for image recognition that we have is uh, for fraud detection. Uh, as a logistics company, it's, uh, we can be compromised by so many elements in the entire network, right? I mean, you have seen news of you ordered an iPhone, got a bar of soap. Uh, these, these are real things. As a logistics company, it's very important for us to kind of make sure that this doesn't happen in our network, that the shipment doesn't get compromised in our network. So as and when we get high value shipments in the network, we scan them using X-ray machine. Uh, if it's a bar of soap instead of an iPhone, we reject it right there and then, so that we know that it wasn't compromised in our network. Now, as the volumes of phones increases, and we do deliver a lot of phones, to manually check everything becomes really hard. To manually check X-ray images becomes really hard. So we are working on a project to actually automate uh, uh, X-ray image recognition. Lastly, where we have uh, another use case of image recognition, uh, a lot of people are interested in how we use image recognition, so I just thought I'll speak about this. Uh, for our B2B business, uh, we have a concept called proof of delivery. There's a, there's a government mandate that you must have a printed slip. When you deliver to your B2B customer, they must sign it, and that acts as a proof of delivery. Uh, our field executives are expected to take the slip, upload it uh, uh, to our systems, where a manual team in the past was actually validating whether the delivery, whether it had a consignee stamp, a consignee signature, and so on. If yes, billing was processed. Now, this was a very time-consuming process. Uh, we were able to successfully use uh, uh, SageMaker's SSD to automate this process. Uh, we achieved extremely good precision uh, and decent recall uh, for this system. 
uh, we were able to reduce the team size by about 60 percent when it comes to this. So that's that's one uh, practical use case of you know just how automation can help uh, bring in more efficiency.